Hi, welcome to In a Pickle Knitting. My name is Donna and I'm the host of this podcast about knitting and some sewing and a little bit of quilting today too. Today is Thursday, August 1st, 2019. I'm coming to you from the part of Manassas in Northern Virginia in the U.S. And welcome, I hope you'll find something today that you'll enjoy seeing. I have a number of finished objects to share some things that I'm working on right now and a couple of things coming up as well as our fiber related children's literature book that I will share a little bit later. We also have a winner to announce so let's get started. The first finished object I have today, don't know where I said it, is the little baby sweater that I was working on. This is called Seamless Yoked Sweater and I know I won't be able to pronounce the maker's or pattern writer's last name, so I'll put the name up here. It's Carol, and I'm not sure how to say the last name, Baroness, perhaps. So here's my little finished sweater. I did make some changes to the pattern. It's supposed to have buttons all the way down the front, and I just did the two buttons up here. It's also supposed to have a repeat of this um, stitch pattern down here and here and I did delete those as well but I think it makes a really really sweet sweater I was trying to make a newborn size and I used Ella Ray I don't have the yarn right here but here's a little scrap of it Ella Ray it's Cashmerino Sport and this is what I do when I'm giving a gift of something made from yarn I take what some leftover yarn and wrap the ball band around it so they'll have washing instructions which I'll also include on a note the washing instructions but in case there's ever any problem I always tell them hold on to this and I can try to fix you know a snag or something not that I'm very good at fixing things but and nobody's ever asked me to do it but it's an offer so there's some yarn and I also will include um, this I ordered these buttons from Catherine Collins it was an Etsy shop their mother of pearl buttons and there's uh, the two buttons on the sweater but also the booties have a smaller button of the same kind so I will include these along with the gift so it'll be the sweater and I had previously shown you the finished little booties and I do have project page which gives you all the pattern information because right now I don't have those that booty pattern sitting in front of me and then I wanted a little bonnet to go with it so I made another beloved bonnet this is a tin can knits pattern and it goes from newborn through adult I wanted it to be fairly small and I think I didn't follow the pattern exactly and I don't think I took any notes I just saw that I thought that looked big enough and started it so you start at the I cord work up increase and then decrease down the other side and end with I cord so when I thought it looked big enough I stopped and I hope that it is big enough but I thought that pattern went really nicely because there's stockinette stitch and there's the garter stitch so I think that will look really cute with it always the bonnets always look big when you see it next to the sweater but babies heads are large for their overall proportion so I hope that'll be right who knows so that is uh, two finished objects actually the bonnet and the little sweater the next thing that I finished was the quilt that I'm, I'm giving this all as a gift to the same person so I finished the quilt and I'm very happy with the way it turned out I, I know when I talked about making the quilt I wasn't pleased because I think it doesn't line up this way or maybe it's this way and it should but I don't think you notice it I had it quilted at a local quilt shop called serendipity quilts and they have a long arm there and a lady who does it and I chose this pattern you can probably tell better this way they're like hearts here and I just thought all of those hearts and loops put together made for a nice quilt I did buy white batting cotton batting so that the dark gray here well, it's really called light gray but it's kind of dark for the quilt wouldn't show through and it doesn't but maybe you can see that quilt pattern better this way 
the minky on the back, which I just love the feel of it, so soft. And then I did the binding around the edge and I chose to go with pink since it is a girl and there are pink squares in here, but it, it's a lot of colors, I think six colors. And on my machine, I used this blanket stitch to go around and attach the binding so it does the back and the front at the same time. I had, anyway, I don't know what I was about to say there when I said I had. So here's the quilt. Can't get it all in, of course. It's, it's a baby quilt to throw on the floor for babies to lay down and spit up on and have their tummy time. I had, so this is part of the gift and I had shown before that I had made this pink knitted blanket and the hat, booties, and sweater. I have something else. I don't know if I'll get it made or not though. I wanted to make some burp cloths out of cloth diapers. I bought them all and I want to applique using the colors that I put in the quilt, but I just haven't not gotten to it. So I might, I might not make it to get that part done, but that'll be okay too. I'll use those for something else. All right, what's next? I will not know anything unless I look down here at my notes. Sorry about that. Oh, my July Desert Vesta Dye Work socks I finished and they would be, the deadline was yesterday, but I did finish a couple of days in advance. And here they are. The colorway is called It's Me, Margaret. And that is from the Judy Bloom book, um, Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. These colors are in the cover of the latest version of that book. Now, I made these for my daughter because that was one of her favorite books. And so I usually do 72 stitches, but she has narrow feet, whereas I have wide feet. And she has a shorter foot. She wears about a size five and a half or six. So they didn't, well, that length didn't matter, but the width, she just has a more narrow foot. So instead of casting on 72 stitches, I did 64. And the whole time I was knitting the first socks, sock, I, on the needles, I kept saying, oh, these look so narrow. They look so narrow. They do look so narrow compared to socks I knit for me. But I kept thinking, well, 64, 72 stitches, I guess, you know, that's why. And it wasn't until I went to do the heel on the first sock that I realized I was knitting with a size zero needle instead of a size one needle. That was unintentional. But the way it happened was, I when I do an um, an afterthought heel, you have to pick up stitches. You don't, well yeah, I guess anytime you do an afterthought heel, you have to pick up stitches. And I always use a size smaller needle just to pick the stitches up and then I'll knit onto the size I'm using. So I knit with a one I have the zero to pick up the stitches and then once they're picked up and I cut and open it up and start knitting, I knit onto the one. That's the point I realized I've been knitting with a size zero. I had pulled the needle out of the bag I had used last, just not realizing there were two needles in the bag, just grabbed a needle and started knitting and seriously to have knit an entire sock minus the heel and not realize you were using a smaller needle is crazy and dare I use the S word just that really was silly to have made that mistake because I kept saying that seems so narrow but I again the reason I thought it was was 72 versus 64 stitches which was one reason but additionally these are size zero so I hope they fit her they fit on the sock blocker and the last pair of socks that I knit for her on the sock blocker that fit on fit her feet so I'm hopeful, but silly me. But those are finished, and I had quite a bit of yarn left over. Probably, again, the size zero and the 64 stitches. But I won't make that mistake again, I hope. Not good to repeat your mistakes. I have some dishcloths that I finished. These I did post on Instagram because I am participating in the Yarn Hoarders 2019 Dishcloth Challenge. And you post on Instagram when you finish. So there are three. This color, I don't know any of the colors. They're all sugar and cream yarn. 
and they're all from stash that I had. So this colorful one, I think it looks very tropical. And I had a pink and I had a white. I really would like to make another one with this tangerine color, but the only orange I have is a bright orange. I could look for another orange, but really the idea of doing this challenge was for me to get rid of the cotton yarn stash or work it down seriously, not to add to it. So who knows? Um, it is hard to find colors in the sugar and cream that actually match each other. You think they do, but then they don't. So I have these three. I'm ahead. Uh, I think I'm at 35 and is the challenge was to do, I guess the challenge is whatever you want to do, but my challenge was one a week. I'll do 52 this year. And I'm ahead of, of that, but not by very much. So I have to keep going. Not to move on to a work in progress, but since it seems logical, I'm going to. My next one that I'm making is with this colorway, which since I have the ball here, I can tell you is called Countryside Ombre. It has two shades of purple and I think one shade, two shades of green. I just started that one. So you can see how it's knitting up there. Again, I always use the same pattern. It's Granny's Cloth Revamped. There's a link on my project page that you can find that pattern. It is a free pattern on Ravelry. I don't know if it's free any place else or not. Very common, but I've got it memorized, so I'm just going with that one. So that'll be my next one. And then I have a purple and, well, I can show you. I have a purple and a green that, there's the green and there's the purple with some extra pink fuzz. So that'll be my next set. I like to make uh, coordinated sets. It's my matchy matchy nature. Okay, so let's see, three dish claws. And I also finished two more hats. I mentioned that I was, I am going to Kate knitting at the, re, at the estate, and that is a retreat in Monticello. I'm not gonna say, is it, I think it's Indiana, but is it Illinois? No, no, it must be, it's Indiana. It is being hosted by the Leading Men Fiber Arts Yarn Company, and they are doing a collection of hats that will go to a cancer treatment facility place. Somebody's organized this and will collect them and take them all there. They have a goal to get a large number of hats. I don't remember the goal exactly. I have to date done five hats and I will continue to do them until I go in September. The first one that I did is this lavender hat. It was done from, and I didn't have the tag anymore, it was off of one of those um, already wound balls of um, Cascade Yarns Superwash 220. So no idea which color it was. And I started off knitting it and I got to about here and I thought, you know what, this is so boring because it's just the same color over and over and over again. I thought, what a boring hat. So I thought, oh, I'm gonna put a little pattern in it just doing a purl stitch every once in a while, every few rows. And so that's what I did. And then when I got to the decreases, I thought, oh, now I'm gonna have to figure that part out. And I don't think I figured it out perfectly, but I think it worked okay. So I had to I had to go find a decrease that would work with the number of stitches and then also keeping this in, in, in line. Usually I think I do more decreases. But I liked this. This was where you did a knit two together and then an SSK or SSK and then a knit two together so that the the decreases came together like that. I sort of like that look on the hat. So no pattern. I just made it up and didn't write it down. No idea what I did there, but hopefully someone would like that hat. The next hat, I really, really like this hat. I got this pattern from a book that I've had for a really long time and have only knit one thing out of it. And I remember finding lots of things in this book I wanted to knit and then I only did one. This is, book is called Cozy Knits, 50 Fast and Easy Projects from Top Designers and I guess edited by and also contributed by Tannis Gray. The pattern 
the hat that I chose to do is this one here. And it is called Hers and His Cabled Brim, Brim Tam and Beanie. So for men, you do the same thing, but just you do different numbers of stitches so that it's tighter and hugs the hat more as a head, more as a beanie. But this one has more slouch to it. You can see there with the decreases how slouchy it is in the back. And it kind of comes out here a little bit. I really, really enjoyed this pattern. It was lots of fun. I loved the yarn, although I think it's prettier in a solid. I have this yarn and had not, I can, I'll talk about that later, but I wanted to use it. So this cable does not show up as well. Maybe if I get close, you can see how it's, um, these circles like a little circle in in straight part. I really liked the way that looked and The colorway was so pretty it's black And then it has two shades of purple which I think is just the one shade, but it's just lighter in spots Two colors of green I think because there actually seem to be two different greens and then it's kind of a jade green and then this blue really really pretty yarn this yarn, let me grab the tag. Here's the skein. I had two 50 gram skeins of this yarn. I started to make something else that used two kinds of yarn in it. And when I gave that up, which isn't something I do very often, but when I gave that up, I think I ended up having to cut the yarn. So I didn't start with, because the skein that was, one skein was already wound up, the other was not. And I got to the decreases and ran out of yarn, so I had to ball up the second skein. So this might make a hat, but the other one didn't quite make a hat, or maybe that won't either. This yarn is called, from Alchemy Yarns of Transformation. It's Sanctuary is the base. And the colorway is Underwater Moonlight. It's 30% silk, 70% wool. And you can find them at www.alchemyyarns.com. And this, this kind of a shine, it's really pretty gold, shiny ball band. And I cut it so that I could uh, read all of that for you. So that's the hat. Uh, this would be the hers cabled brim tam and I showed you the yarn I used a size 7 needle on that and usually on worsted weight yarn I use a size 5 but I, I liked knitting with this and it was probably the yarn the silk and the wool blend um, but I just really liked making it you made this um, long strip back and forth. I was just using a DPN at that point, made a, the, the strip that would go the distance around. And then you had to pick up stitches and start knitting up. And then it, I just had on a 16 inch circular needle and just knit round and round until I got to the decreases and put it back on the DPNs. So there are my two more hats to take with me when I go to the retreat in um, kind of later September. The next thing that I finished is not a knitting project. It was a sewing project. And I told you I would be going to take another sewing class with Kelly at um, Susie's Quilt Shop. And we were making by Emmeline or Emmeline Bags the double flip shoulder bag. And maybe the picture will show you how you have the two zippered parts and you can lift them up and open them. And in the middle is another section. So I had the class and it was so much fun. It took, it was like six hours the first day and I ended up being there about three hours, maybe two and a half, three hours the second day. The, one of the ladies that was in the class had already done a few steps and I thought, well, silly me, why didn't I do that? Because I might've been able to finish a lot faster and not even, that lady didn't even have to come back the second day, which would have been preferable to me not that I didn't enjoy it, but just it's the whole weekend, pretty much. But I never thought about getting started early, which it was the hand, just getting the handle done. It's not that it's hard. It's, it's simple. It's a piece of cake. But still, it is a little bit time-consuming because 
I did the handle out of that fake leather stuff, which I bought the wrong kind. And um, I didn't know that till after I already bought it and got the pieces prepped. And so I just went with it. And I think I maybe I would like it better. I, I love it. So I don't have to like it any better. I'm happy with how it turned out. But I think maybe it would have been a better option for the bag. So there's the bottom, which is the leather. And then you've got the handle, long shoulder handle that's adjustable. I used gunmetal pieces. It had this cool way to attach this, so this will come off. Maybe that's what I'll do for showing it is just take it off. That can hold it up better. But you have these cool things here that actually screw in. You make holes in the bag and then you put some glue as well and then you screw it together so that it uh, is very sturdy. So here are these two fold over parts and underneath them is a pocket and then in between them is a zippered large compartment and not only is it zippered but on the other side it has a divided slip-in pocket so for your cell phone or your keys or something like that. It also has this magnetic closure here so that center part goes back together and each of these zippered parts opens and goes all the way down so you've got two of these pockets to hold your stuff. So that was lots of fun. I'm glad I took this in the class. She listed it as intermediate and it definitely is. It's nothing's hard, but just reading the directions and deciphering the directions and there's always the risk of making a mistake that you know you might then have to recut and rip, rip out. It's so nice to have somebody there with you saying, no, put it this way or be sure that you first, or don't go stitch all the way to the end or, you know, just like even putting this on, I never would have put glue. Oh, it's screwed on. That's great. That's all I would have done. But she's like, now put some fray check in the little holes that we just punched through and let's put some glue in there too. And just little tips that they give you, I think for a project like this, for me, that was the way to go. But you could definitely do it without it. It's not that I couldn't have read the directions and figured it out, but it's, it is intermediate. It is, I would not call this a beginning pattern. Lots of fun though, so, and I, I like my fabric choices. I, I'm happy with totally how it turned out. So I think that's all I have that's finished. Well, I, one more thing that I can show a picture of. You remember that um, I offered a Notions pouch prize and first time Sadly, I didn't get a response. And then it was so sad because the lady who did win had not been able to watch. She'd been on vacation, different things going on. And then she watched and realized it was too late. And I was very sad that that happened to her. But, um, you know, I, I never know what else to do. Maybe you can tell me what else I should do instead. I, I felt really bad. But I did finish uh, the, the second drawing person drawn got hold of me and requested fabric that had that was a happy fabric had kittens and yarn and I did not have any fabric that met that criteria but I found some on Etsy and ordered that and put together the notions pouch and added all the things and mailed it off and she's received it and seems happy with it I'll put a picture here I added one thing that I hadn't mentioned and that was to make a little holder for the scissors and I did that out of the matching fabric too. Since I had to order a yard of fabric, this wasn't something I could order in fat quarters, which is all you need for that pattern, that Luli pattern, Notions cases, two fat quarters. So I, I had to order a yard, so I have quite a bit left over. I'll probably make a bag or something out of that. So um, hopefully I've already had the picture up here for you. And let's move on to my works in progress, which I already showed you one, which was the dish gloss. And I don't really have but one other. Isn't that odd? I finished up a lot of stuff sort of at the same time and I've just been wondering what I was gonna do. Let me show you what I, I have just started. And this is the pat pattern I told you about from Ellie at Craft House Magic. She wrote another sock pattern and I think this is her best so far. Country Garden Socks, patterned by Ellie Jones. And you'll see that um, 
you've got rib and then this is her lattice because it's a garden and then the section on the foot and the leg are butterflies and that's a cable where you do a little cable stitch to make the butterflies and then she has a, um, a heel flap and gusset brain dead here but down here this is the fence around the garden and it's green for the grass and then the toe is it looks like you know typical wedge or rounded toe I have only just started Ellie also sells the yarn that in this combination but I made a mistake when I ordered it I couldn't I thought I had figured out how to order the set and then it just kept coming up just the sock yarn I thought well I have some green so I just couldn't figure it out well later I went and looked and I totally figured it out. It's just the pull down, when you did a pull down, you needed to be farther down. And I either wasn't pulling it down or it wasn't showing up because of my screen or something like it was at the bottom. I don't know, but I could have ordered it. So it, you can order that as a set, but I did have some green, so that's okay too. I'm gonna show you how far I am. I've only gotten the cuff done and the lattice portion. So now I'm about to start the leg pattern there. I made a mistake. I started this on the airplane. We just got back from Sanibel Island and the pattern was in my bag, but it was under the seat and we had the seat belts on. And so I thought, you know, I think that was a twisted, a one by one twisted rib. And I don't like to do one by one twisted rib. I don't mind doing it, but I always get a ladder on the side, so I don't like to do it. So I thought, oh, I'm just gonna do a one by one rib because I won't, as long as my first stitch on the needle, when I'm doing magic loop, and you've got, you're about to start stitching, so this needle's pushed up here. If my first stitch is a knit stitch, I, I'm fine. But if it's any other stitch, a knit through the back loop, or a purl stitch, I get a ladder there. So I can't seem to control that. So I thought, no, I'm just gonna do a one by one rib. Well, later, when I finished the rib and I went to start the lattice part, I pulled the pattern out because I certainly didn't know how to do that. And thought, oh, it was a two by two rib. And I really like doing two by two rib better than one by one, but it looks just fine being one by one. Just sorry, Ellie, I didn't follow the pattern. I just was too lazy to get it out of my bag. So isn't that lattice adorable? That is fun. It was really lots of fun and, and really easy too. So I can't wait to do some more on these socks. Now I said I did have some green and I knew I already had this mini skein. This went goes with one of my sock blanks from Andre Sunitz. And so I thought, well, I'll just use that and that'll be fine for grass. But then something else happened. I was watching a YouTube, um, podcast and I was watching on my television and on my television when one finishes if you don't tell it to do something else it just goes on to something random next when I watch on my iPad I have that turned off because I don't just want it to go to the next thing sometimes I want something specific but I'm, I haven't figured that out on the television so it went into this podcast and I just watched it it was really good Actually, right now, don't remember the person's name, but she has um, a yarn dye business. It's Dye Monkey Yarns, dyemonkeyyarns.com. And so I really enjoyed her podcast. So when she finished and was talking about some yarn that she dyed, I didn't know till that she dyed yarn. I thought, oh, I'm gonna go look at her site. And I did. Now I'm not buying yarn really, because I'm still trying to you know, not have yarn left over when I die. But I had to buy this one because it's, isn't that pretty? I'm gonna use it for the grass, but the name is in a pickle. So I had to have it. That is so silly. That is such a silly reason to buy something, but I get, I, I get into that trap. I, it's just, it's, it's a sickness. Well, let me show you also Ellie's yarn all balled up. Isn't that gorgeous? Look at the just delicate colors in that because she said the butterflies are in the sky so she added colors to the blue. Just gorgeous. And I'm also using one of her bags to keep this project in. This is Dragonfly Project Bag. 
she does freehand what is it free motion quilting and she even does her name on the back crafthousemagic.com and she put a little dragonfly down here too Ellie you're so good at this inside the fabric the lining is this fabric which is a dragonfly fabric and there's two patch pockets in here but she also was selling a matching notions pouch so I needed that because gee I can't make a notions pouch no it's the fabric and I have several of her scissor holders that she makes this matches and she sends it either with scissors or without if you already have scissors but I always like to I find that I can't find scissors in my house I have 30 30 pair easily of scissors and rarely can I find scissors when I want them story of my life I can never find anything so you don't want to hear about that that is what I'm working on that's it the pair of socks and the dishcloth that's all I really have going right now but I'm gonna start another hat and I have two skeins of this yarn that I've never made anything out of. It's not really enough, I think, to make anything big because it's just two skeins. But this is Manos Maxima. So it's a thicker yarn than worsted. Or they might call it worsted, but it... So it's Manos del Uruguay. The color is M7158. This has 219 yards or 200 meters in 100 grams. So it is a worsted weight, but it just, I guess because it's a singles, it just, it looks heavier to me. So maybe I'll do a size seven needle and I'm gonna find a hat that will go with this yarn and make a hat for the charity contribution. And then I also need to make my Desert Vista Dye Work socks for August since today's August 1st. Here is the colorway. Isn't that great with the black and that bright yellow and orange and the magenta? This color is called The Westing Game, which is another novel. And I can find that book for you in the library. I can see the author's name, but I don't think I can say it. So um, that's it's it's a great middle middle grade age book. And I remember my daughter read it in seventh grade and just loved it. So she's read it many times. It's it's a, a mystery trying to solve. So that's what I'm going to do for my August socks is the Westing game. And again, I'm going to make those for my daughter, I think for Christmas. So, I, But I'll make sure and use a size one needle this time, just in case those others don't fit. I don't want to repeat that. And then we need to tell about who won. I went over to the chatter thread on the sock knit along that we're doing right now or crochet along, make along. And Ellie from Craft House Magic offered a copy of the pattern that I just showed you, the Country Garden Socks. So I looked at when I started this uh, make-along, which was June something or other, and did posts from then till now in that chatter thread, which was numbers 712 through 741. And Random Number Generator picked the very last one, 741. And that is... Um, Nana Volvo, I think. Let me see. I've got it pulled up here, but it turned off. It is Nana Volvo, and she is knitting. If I can get Great Gatsby socks. She's using some Felici yarn. I love those colors. Um, I've never seen that colorway on Felici, so um, absolutely love them. Anyway, uh, Nana Volvo, if you will get hold of me and I have Gmail account you can use you can send me a message on Ravelry um, don't comment on down below the video though don't do it that way because I wouldn't want you to put any personal information out there so it's one of those two ways where I just I'm gonna see it if you will send me your full name and mailing address oh no you don't need to do that what am I thinking I, I can you don't have to do anything I'll contact Ellie <laughs> I should edit that part out. Probably won't work, but though. I will contact Ellie and she will gift that pattern to you. So you can check it. They'll usually send an email when you get a gift pattern and check your message box on Ravelry or your uh, where you keep your, your patterns, your pattern library. Ah, oh, words. They're so hard sometimes. 
So congratulations, Nana Volvo, and keep on knitting socks. I hope you enjoy that pattern. I know I'm really enjoying it. And finally, then, we have our book. Let me get it. Please excuse any lighting differences in the video here or the big jump that might happen. I'm refilming the children's literature portion of the podcast because I didn't realize there was quite a bit of noise in the background from our trash can, our, our trash truck going through the neighborhood. So I'm choosing just to refilm this part, but I had to reset everything up, so I'm not sure that it'll come out being a very smooth transition. I apologize for that. Our book today is a really great book. It's called Knit Your Bit. And I, this is a book that I have checked out from my local library. It is a World War I story. It is historical fiction. It was written by Deborah Hopkinson and illustrated by Stephen, not sure how to say his last name there, Goranasia, not sure. I will link the book down in the show notes and you can um, check this book out yourself and perhaps your local library has it. I like this book in particular because of the genre. This is a historical fiction book and in fact the fiction part is not very far off the real, the, what really happened in this story. I really like that the author, as many writers for, of historical fiction for children will do, has included an author's note, and the author's note gives you a lot of information about the actual historical event, and in this case gives you some additional information about how you can still do this activity, knitting for soldiers and sailors and Marines. So um, the author's note is really great. Historical fiction books are enjoyed by children, something that surprised me as a teacher. I wasn't expecting how much children enjoys, enjoyed biography and historical fiction. It's a great way to add a bit of relatability to the past for children is through historical fiction where you can weave it into a story. And this story is woven very closely to the truth. So here it is. This is a story about a little boy named Mikey. His dad is going off to serve in World War I, and he wants to go. And his dad explains that staying back takes a lot of courage too. It's, it's hard to be the ones who stay home. But he wants to do something to help. And his mother is knitting for uh, the troops, and he wants no part of that, but his sister learns to knit. And later, the town is gonna to be participating in a knitting bee. It's going to be a competition. It's going to there's an entry fee. It's to raise money. It's to knit items to be sent over. And this really happened in Central Park during World War One. And so there, re, the knitting bee that happens in this story is based on the one that actually did happen. There are a lot of details in that author's note about that particular event. Well, Mikey ends up and some of his friends deciding to help too and to learn to knit through a, a challenge that's offered between girls against the boys essentially. And so they do participate in the B and Mikey actually does, um, at the end he manages to knit a pair of socks that gets sent over to his dad and his dad comes home wearing those socks. So that was um, uh, where he could feel like his contribution was not something little, it was something big. But um, there's so much more, you know, it's, it's just, a, it's a cutely told story. I love how at the beginning and the end, they have actual photographs. There you see some girls knitting. You see the sheep. They were actually on the White House lawn. You see some boys knitting there. So it's, and you see school children knitting. It's where the, the country came together and the uh, groups came together for a common cause. And it went over gender roles. You know, boys can knit and boys do knit. And so I think this story has an important place if you have a child who is maybe second, third, fourth, fifth grade, perhaps older if you were doing a unit on 
the on World War One that time period. The, uh, this kind of literature being read even to older children helps to pull things in for them at either as an intro or as uh, something to do before you're going to do some research on what were other things that were done during that time period to um, come together and and provide a united force behind events. So. This is an excellent read. I would suggest it for um, all of the reasons that I've stated. So thanks so much. And I don't think I have anything else. I've, I was away for a week. We went to Sanibel Island, which is my favorite place on earth to be. And I didn't knit a whole lot there. I'm having some trouble with my eyes and I'm finding that I'm, they're getting very strained because I'm having such trouble seeing and on vacation it's really hard because when I knit at home and I might even have my husband take a picture of me so you can see it's it's I have to be in my chair with a bright ot light and a magnifier along with readers on in order to see to knit and it's starting to cause me to have uh, eye pain and headaches so I was, I'm not knitting as late into the night as I typically would. And when we're at the beach, I really, if it's low tide, I have to be out on the beach looking for seashells. Even though this, at Sanibel, this is not the best time of the year to find seashells. It might be close to the worst. But it's when we could go because it's when um, I did not have to watch my grandson because they were at a different beach. They went to the Outer Banks and... Um, as soon as we found out that they had plans and were taking their vacation, then that was we. I said, "Let's go. I don't. I don't care. It's always so good to get away, and we just enjoy doing so much on that little island that has no stoplights, and I don't think there's a speed limit over 35, and I don't think anything's open after eight or nine o'clock at night. It's right up my right right with my speed, so." that's about all I've got today. Um, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you are, um, you found something today that interested you. I, I'm also going to be making a sweater for my grandson. It was based on a recommendation from one of the viewers. I ordered the pattern. It's not here yet. So I'll have to wait and tell you about that next time. Hopefully next time I already will have a start on that. I totally forgotten to uh, mentioned that I am planning to make him a sweater for next fall. So have fun with everything that you're doing at home. Something I have been working on that I didn't mention was a fairy garden. I've been a little bit Pinterest obsessed with the fairy gardens. I wanted to make one. I'm obsessed. I, I love miniature small things and I like to garden and I thought, oh, I really want to make one of these. So I've been making some things for it. It's a work in progress, but I did post a short video on Instagram the other day. I've changed, I've added some things to the garden since then. And so I will take another little video and I will put it at the very end here. But I'm having lots of fun with that. And I thought, well, that does go along with the socks I'm knitting, the country garden socks. And I just am, I'm working on making my own fairy garden. So thanks a lot for watching. I appreciate you coming back and see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.